This is One on One. We're pleased to welcome back our good friend Shavar Jeffries, President, Democrats for Education Reform. Good to see you. Happy to be here. So many things to talk about. What do we mean education reform? What do we have to reform and why, Shavar? Well, you know, in too many of our public schools, both in urban communities as well as rural communities, the children just aren't getting what they deserve. We have many individual schools that are working well, but as a system, our schools aren't working well enough to really prepare young people for the global 21st century economy. And so we focus on five issues, standards and accountability, one. And we want our, taught, our kids taught on the basis of global standards so they're ready to compete with anybody in the world. Uh, we believe in reimagining teacher prep. Our teachers are amazing. Uh, but two-thirds of our teachers say that the graduate schools of ed are not giving them what they need to drive instruction in the classroom, so we want to reimagine that. Uh, we need a form in higher education. Uh, too many working families simply can't afford college. Uh, but we also have too many colleges that are dropout factors. The kids are just not making it through. Uh, and then we also need more options within the public education space because, you know, parents need more, more choices to line education. Jump options. on that last one. More options. Yeah. Well, you, you, let's, let's disclose. You and I have talked. Born and raised both in Newark. Yeah. Different wards. There are five wards in the city. We won't get all... You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> there are five wards. You Only up... one ward, the south ward. That's yeah, I know, the, no, the north ward in my world. <laughs> um, but both of us chose, or, or both of us had the opportunity, let's say. Yes. You went to Seton Hall Prep. I did, I did. You were part of this initiative called the Griffin Bridges Initiative. I did. Back in 1992. Yeah. Let's just disclose I did not graduate in that year. Uh-huh. You know, just leave that alone. <laughs> so, uh, and I went to Essex Catholic, which yes. doesn't even exist anymore. Yeah. Public schools are great, but we made that choice. Is that what you mean, or choice within the public schools? Well, you know, uh, I mean both. Um, you know, we, the organization I've, I work with, you know, focuses on choice within the public education system. So both making sure our traditional public schools are strong, because we don't believe in one versus the other, right? You they don't? Both, no. We think How about that, someone says, public schools, that's it, that's the way it should be? Well, for that person, we say that's a choice you should be able to make for your no, family. No, for everybody. Well, then I, we don't believe in that. We believe each family should be able to make the choice that's best for their child. So if you want to make a choice best as Catholic, if someone else wants to send their child right. uh, to Chancellor Ave, that should be their choice. We want all of the schools. Chancellor Ave is one of the public schools in the city. No, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, my children. My children um, have attended a private kindergarten school. My son attended a public charter school. He'll be going to Newark Science High School, one of our great traditional public schools in the city of Newark in the fall. So I wonder, our daughter is in a public school, a great public school in Montclair, and our boys went through the public schools, but in fact are at the prep, Seton Hall Prep. That's right. That's that was right. a choice. Absolutely. And that's what we believe. And we believe that when parent families are making choices, it holds all these systems more accountable. And frankly, particularly in our public schools, we need our schools to be accountable to parents and families and not to politicians. What are these families facing, Shavar? Well, they're facing many challenges, particularly in our urban communities and our rural communities. Mm -hmm. I mean, frankly, not only our low-income African-American Hispanic families in the city, but frankly, from our poor rural white families, none of them are really getting what they deserve from our school system. N none of them are not really competitive for college and careers, uh, particularly in a 21st century economy where the skill level uh, required to get a decent job mm -hmm. is going up. So we need all of our schools to, we need to raise our standards. We've got to pay our teachers better. We've got to have more differentials so we can right. pay teachers better who are in the most needy schools as well. Shavar, let me follow up on this. By the way, we're talking to Shavar Jeffries, if you listen on the audio side. Uh, he knows a lot about education, also a former candidate for mayor in the yes. great city of yes. Newark. Um, help us on this. Federal policies around education, Trump policies, you said he's disinvesting? Yes. Every, every year President Trump has announced his budget, he sought to cut monies for Title I, which is monies that goes to low-income students throughout the country. He's cut money for Pell Grants. That's how working families and poor families can afford college. I receive Pell Grants to go to college. Right. Working families and poor families need Pell Grants. He's tried to cut in that. And he's frankly tried to eviscerate the Office of Civil Rights, which protects students with disabilities throughout this country, kids who speak English as a second language, girls to make sure they have equitable access, particularly to sports, and, and students of color as well. Um, and so he's been very problematic on education policy. Okay. Governor Murphy and public education, you say? Well, I'm, I've been, frankly, disappointed in the sense that he sought to cut back on, the, on charter schools, which is, a fam, which is a, an option that families, particularly in our cities, really want uh, throughout the state of New Jersey. The state of New Jersey has the second highest performing public charter school sector in the United States, uh, in North... But, hold on one second. Charter schools are public schools. They are public charter schools, absolutely. Okay, but... So I don't understand. Are you saying he's cutting back on them? And so, therefore, there's less choice? Well, he's issued a moratorium. Uh, so if you have ops, so if you have providers who want to expand their services and families want them, he's decided artificially across the board he's going to restrict that. Uh, we think the family should make those decisions, not politicians. Why is that a problem? 
It's a problem because, again, New Jersey has the second highest public charter uh, performing sector in the country. So we see kids getting a month and a half, two months more of learning in math and in English. We see kids graduating from high school at higher levels, going to college at higher levels. We have many good traditional public schools as right. well, so it's not about one versus the other. But the idea that you'd want to stop that when it's working for our children doesn't make a lot of you sense. You know, it's interesting. Shavar has a fascinating background. Um, by the way, when you, you log on to our site, you read about Shavar. Your grandmother had a big influence in your life because? She was amazing. She was a public school teacher. I lost my mom, unfortunately, to gun violence when I was 10, and my grandmother stepped in and raised me and my six-month-old sister. Uh, she was everything. Uh, she worked her butt off to put me in a small Catholic school in Hillside, New Jersey, Christ the King. Then I received the scholarship we talked about from the Boys and Girls the Club. The Griffin Bridges. The Griffin Bridges program. What did that do for you? It changed everything. I mean, no one in my family had gone away to college. Uh, I was the first to do that. Uh, I was prepared for that because of the education I received, which is why I'm so passionate about educational opportunity. When I got to college, it was downhill for me uh, because I was ex ex exceedingly well prepared. Uh, frankly, I thought college was relatively easy because of the education I got through Griffin Bridges. So the prep and my grandmother, I wouldn't be here without that. What was the message your grandmother gave you? Work hard, uh, do the best you can, and also make sure you pay it forward to the next generation. Define that pay it forward part, because you've been living it every day. Well, I've been a civil rights lawyer for about 20 years now. So not only have I done a lot of education work, I've done work around violence against women. Um, again, I lost my mom to domestic violence, so that means a lot to me. I've done work to support immigrants. I've done work around housing policy. I've built institutions. I was the founding uh, board chair of the Team Academy KIPP charter schools in the city of Newark. Been on the board of the Boys and Girls Club of Newark. Uh, I believe I've been very blessed. I've been blessed in ways that many other young people have not. And so it's my obligation to pay that forward and to serve other people. Before I let you out of here, how serious do you think we are, Shavar, about having an honest conversation about what our kids need in, in urban communities, Newark, Jersey City, Camden, yeah. Brooklyn, because we'll nationalize this, the, the Bedford Stuyvesant? In, in Brooklyn, the Bronx, et cetera, Philadelphia. How honest are we? I don't think we're honest. I think there's too many um, kind of slogans and sloganeering and cheap rhetoric and empty rhetoric, but we're really not serious about dealing with the range of issues that our young people face. Um, you know, in entrenched poverty generates a whole series of issues from trauma, from housing insecurity, economic insecurity, where families can't get jobs, put food on the table. The levels of violence we see not only in our households but in our communities is very problematic. Uh, macro level racism, I mean, our mm. kids are internal that That's with right. the police shootings and just day-to-day -day racial discrimination. Our kids are hit with so many different issues, and we have to have a serious conversation that addresses these issues in a holistic manner. This has been uh, Shavar Jeffries. Um, you may have known him because he ran for uh, mayor in the city of Newark, but the rest of the story we're just trying to touch on here. Um, Shavar, I want to thank you for joining us, and um, it's an important conversation about education, and I uh, want you to continue by looking at our website, and we'll keep talking about education. This is one-on-one. -on -one. I'm Steve Adubato. Stay tuned. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, RWJ Barnabas Health, TD Bank, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, the Russell Berry Foundation and by Johnson & Johnson. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.